Hey everyone, in this video I'll explain the basic fundamentals of mixing audio levels here in Studio One. Let's check it out. You'll often hear the terms mixing levels in audio production. That basically means that it's the art of taking each one of these tracks containing audio and adjusting the amount of sonic energy, the volume of each one, so that you have a really great balance in the end. But there's a lot of technical information and techniques that we should be aware of. Let's go back to my edit window. I'm gonna solo my drums. Select solo, drag it down, and now we have all of the drums in this mix soloed. Let's take a quick listen. Now, the energy of these drum tracks that I have soloed here are being channeled into my main fader right here. And what's happening, you can see it's already clipping a little with this red here section on the master volume. It's probably my snare drum. So what you want to do is always avoid clipping because you need some headroom, a little bit of space left, obviously, for the mastering process, typically in audio production. What happens here in your DAW is the sound comes from your hard drive, your, your storage medium, I should say, comes down through the track. It's processed by inserts, possibly sent to some sends like uh, reverbs and delays, and then it comes into this area for panning and then level adjustment. Now this is a really crucial phase because this right now is giving you the information that's post all of this information. So when you add inserts here, your levels down here can change. So you always wanna be mindful of your levels. And one way to do that is to start at a really conservative volume. I'm gonna select all of these drum tracks. And a handy way to do that is I can drag them all down as a group, or I can select in the value box and hit, for example, minus 6.0, and they all come down. So now I'm ha starting at a more conservative level because I want to avoid clipping from the get-go. Let's take a listen now. There. So think of this as like building a house. Each one of these is material and they all have a certain weight to them. For example, wood, brick, steel, plumbing, electrical, appliances, and so on. And when you take the weight, sonic energy of all of these tracks and sum it here, this will give you the grand scale of what everything is. So although any one of these tracks isn't clipping, going over zero and turning red, the energy of all of these, although it looks like they're not, can be here in the main volume area. So we always wanna start off with a more conservative level and give ourselves headroom. Headroom is really key to mixing. Now, let me do something here. I'm gonna to come to my inserts and let's add a level meter. Now this level meter here, if I put it in this area, first in my inserts, it's going to give me the level of the audio coming from my storage medium and not the information referencing whatever the processing is going to be doing. And this also has some standards here, this information. Here's um, True Peak and different weights for musical scales. Let's take a listen. Okay, now you can adjust this. I can make this longer horizontally. And again, this is going to give me the information of the levels prior to my processing, and I can make it larger vertically. So as you add processing here, this meter here, because it's before all that, will not change. But this information down here will show the resulting value of the additional gain from my processing. So adding a level meter is kind of a handy way to know where you're starting, and this is where you're going. And I talked very briefly about these weighted scale measuring options here. Well, you can also have the same for each one. Uh, actually, if I do this on any one of these, it affects the entire group. Watch as I right click on the digital meter section. Right now it's set to peak. Peak will show me just the highest points. Peak RMS will give me a, the high, not only the highest, but an average of the, the energy. Let me select that and press play. Now you can see there's a white bar here as well. If I right click and choose hold as well, it's gonna give me a value to where the highest peak is. It's gonna hold there and now give me an average. 
See, the blue bar is now there. That's showing me the highest peak value around just over minus 12 dBs. And where the average is, let's increase these. Let's go to whole length, I'll increase it to 15 seconds and my RMS to about 1.8 seconds. Now we'll see a little bit more accurately about the energy on that snare drum that we're focused on. There. Here's the peak, showing me the peak of those hits, around minus, uh, minus 10.9. And the average, okay? So these are handy techniques that you should familiarize yourself because as you begin to add tracks and processing to your tracks, this, all of this audio channels and builds the sonic energy into this master fader. And the reason why we want to not go past zero with our initial mixes is so you can leave some room for finalizing. Unless, of course, you're, you're uh, well aware of how to do that and you're adding some mastering here in your, uh, your master fader, which a lot of people like to do, do some bus compression such, and so on. So being aware of what levels are doing and how they work in any DAW is crucial to preserving depth and clarity and volume in your mixes. Now you know. Hey everyone and thank you for watching. I hope you learned a lot from this video. Leave your comments below. Like, share and subscribe. Also, don't forget to download that cheat sheet in the description below.